first elected in 2010, you now are in your seventh term, and your father, K.J. McDonald, also served seven terms from 1977 to 1990. Did you think you'd wind up being a lawmaker for, for as long as him? I did not think that at all. Um, now, when I was a young boy, there, I'm from a family of seven, and I sounded and uh, acted just like my father, just like K.J. So people would call me little K.J. Some of the school teachers would call me senator or governor, just for fun, sure. some of my friends. And uh, I think my mom and uh, dad knew I'd follow in his footsteps, but uh, as a teenager and young adult, I didn't think I would be uh, running for office anytime soon. And uh, certainly when I got elected, I didn't think I'd be here as long as my father for 14 years. But uh, so if I do run again, I'll uh, beat him and win. I gotta win that election. To, right. I'll beat him by two years. And outside of the Capitol, you are a uh, master an award-winning photographer. What's your favorite kind of picture to take? Mainly people is my favorite kind. I like uh, the, the look of an old rugged, you know, veteran or an old man or old woman that has the life lines on their face that I can capture so well and show the emotion and the life that uh, kind of happens to a person that's been around for 80 and 90 years. Sure. So I enjoy that a lot. And then of course babies and you know, newborns. And... You live in Delano, represent House District 29A. And we talked a little bit about Delano before we got started here. I know they, they got one of the greatest baseball fields uh, in the state around here, but can you describe your area a little bit and uh, some of the, the things that, issues that are important to the people in your district? Sure, I am blessed enough to live in the Wright County. So I represent many cities in Wright County, including, uh, but not limited to, <laughs> I don't wanna forget anything, South Haven, Annandale, Howard Lake, Waverly, Montrose, Rockford, Delano, which I live in and have my photo studio. And then some of uh, uh, Rockford, did I say Rockford? Rockford, where my son and daughter and daughter-in-law and granddaughter live. Mm -hmm. And then also some of Meeker County, Kingston, Kingston Township and Clear, Clearwater, City Clearwater. So um, it's a very uh, conservative area. We have great school districts, uh, low crime, of course, uh, neighbors, no neighbors. Um, Churches are very filled. People are very active in their local Lions Clubs and uh, women's clubs and JCs and, and a lot of organizations. Uh, so our, I think what's important in Wright County is that government kind of to, uh, uh, try to stay off our back, if you will. You know, there's a great place for government and uh, the needs that we have of plowing fields and taking care of our borders and our states and, mm -hmm. and very important issues, taking care of our students and uh, school kids and the elderly and the sick. But for the, for, for the most part, I would say, I would describe Wright County as being uh, independent, hardworking. Uh, we're, we're busy raising our families, going to our sporting events and supporting our kids and being active in the community. Mm -hmm. And uh, the less government taken away from our liberties and freedoms, which is probably the case of you know, why our founding fathers uh, revolted, right? Uh, the better in Wright County. And then Delano, I, uh, I do brag about Delano, but um, uh, from Annandale, from South Haven to Annandale, and all over the Wright County that I represent, we have some great cities and good, good leaders, civic leaders and mayors that are active in the community. And a legislative update back in May, kind of want to bring it back to the 2023 session here. You said it was all about the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yes, the I session. did. Okay, what did you mean by that? Well, we had one party rule, as you know, and most uh, Minnesotans realize. I think in general, uh, Minnesotans uh, want, they, they want us to work together. They want, to, especially if it's a split government, which we've had for many years, so I've served. Because then you compromise, and you compromise on issues. You have to give, you have to take. There's some good, the bad, and ugly. In this case, uh, because it was a one-party rule, uh, the Republicans were uh, probably 80% of the time, just to throw in a number, pretty much ignored. Uh, our amendments, our um, suggestions, some of our um, proposed legislation that we want to pass didn't see the light of day. Uh, because of the one-party rule. Uh, I think we got a lot of good things done for our communities, for our school kids and funding education, and taking care of the nursing home funding that was very important and our veterans were very important. Those are some of the good things. Some of the very controversial issues that were uh, social issues that were um, uh, enacted right from the beginning, such as really uh, uh, was very ugly uh, or uh, bad, you could say, depending on what side of the aisle you sit on. So that's kind of what I meant by the good, bad, and the ugly. You, you talked about that, the nursing home funding, both sides were able to come together on, on that toward the end of session. Um, how, how do we make that more commonplace around here? 
You know, uh, of course, the Democrats and the Republicans uh, generally care deeply about the elderly and our nursing homes and making sure that they're funded and taken care of uh, our loved ones. Um, I, if I have to brag a little bit, I'll have to say that the Republican Party, or our House and Senate, did have to push harder than normal, than we should have, actually, because it wasn't part of their agenda. It wasn't the governor's top priority by any means. And uh, I'd say that the Republicans put up a very good fight to ensure that we had uh, the proper funding for the nursing homes, because in rural Minnesota, they are uh, underfunded, underworked, underemployed, and uh, in some cases closing down. So I don't want to com give complete blame to the Democrats, but it wasn't, it didn't appear that that, there was their, that was their top priority. We pushed for more money and more money and more money. And I think at the end, they realized too that, uh, yes, we are sounding the horn of something very important and that they uh, acquiesced and we came to an agreement. And that's what Minnesotans uh, want, I believe. And you're the Republican lead for the House Labor and Industry Finance and Policy Committee and also serve on the Higher Education Committee. What should those committees push for in 2024? Is there anything there that, that you're hoping uh, they address? Yes, I would like to, uh, me and many other folks uh, in my district and I think throughout the state regarding the paid family leave and the sick and paid time that is going to be enacted, uh, I think paid and family sick leave in 2026. Uh, many businesses, school districts, counties, cities are very, very concerned about that enactment that the Democrats pushed through. It's very costly. It's very generous. It's one of the most generous paid and family sick leave um, legislation in the country and is very costly to our school districts, our counties, our cities, and then businesses. So I, uh, many people would personally like to see that we claw back some of that legislation that is too onerous and too costly on the backs of uh, Minnesota uh, businessmen and women and our schools, cities, and counties. So that's labor and industry. Uh, as far as higher ed, um, we need to keep the tuition affordable for students. Our universities are asking for more money and more money and more money, and it's always more money. We have a situation where many students, uh, many folks just can't afford college and or are not going to college. They're taking a two-year, maybe a, a, a two-year uh, uh, community college or a trade school where they can learn to trade and uh, actually instead of coming out of school $60,000 in debt, start at $60,000 or more in a good trade, plumbing, heating, air conditioning, electrician, uh, you name it, there's some great trades there. So um, as, a, um, as a member on that committee, I really want to continue my push for our trades and getting students involved in the trades and having the colleges help because they're competing. They want to compete with those dollars and those students. But uh, University of Minnesota, uh, many students in my district or parents that I've heard from are very nervous about the safety and the cost and basically, uh, and also the indoctrination, pushing in a, a, a politically a one agenda, uh, not overall, not painting with a broad brush, but there is that concern. And just finally, what do you think needs to happen for the 2024 session to be called a success? Well, the 20, the, it's a non-budget year, right? Yep. Uh, it's a bonding year, supposedly, or not supposedly. I mean, well, did a little bonding last year. Yeah, since uh, I've been here, it's always a bonding year. And I've been very, I think, uh, uh, consistent that the second year is a bonding year. That's where we should be putting the money, unless the interest rates are at an astronomical low uh, rate and we can save some money uh, by doing some money bonding this, you know, in the previous year, fine. So I think a successful one would be uh, to have a good bonding bill that takes care of the needs of our towns and cities in Minnesota, not the wants, but the needs, the actual needs. I think that'll be a success. And then uh, uh, continue to help the economy, however government can help, um, with uh, the $8 billion surplus that we're seeing so far. I hope that we as lawmakers realize, well, we, maybe we are collecting a little bit too much from the taxpayers. Inflation is up over, what, 12%? That doesn't include um, energy or food, which is a farce, because those are the two highest costs. So I hope that we can continue to um, keep costs down and put that money away uh, and realize that perhaps we're overtaxing Minnesotans. So it'll be really policy, I think, next year uh, in 2024. Perhaps the greatest thing some people in my district say, the least we do is probably the safest venture. As Ronald Reagan would say, I'm here with the government. No, he said the, the greatest fear, the greatest words to fear are, I'm here with the government and I'm here to help. <laughs> he did say that, that's true. Representative McDonald, thanks for being with Chris, us. Chris, thank you very much.